Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name's Brian, and in this video we're going to have the first uh, battle report where it's two different people against each other for War Machine. My good friend Ethan's going to be piloting the Circle side while I'll be playing the Heretic with Grimkin. I do want to insert a small disclaimer before we start. COVID-19 is serious business, and it's not that Ethan and I are trying to side skirt any precautions or safer at home initiatives that have been laid out. Uh, Ethan and I both live in very rural communities, and our respective counties have uh, set forth their uh, initiatives to slowly reopen things. And one of those is uh, how groups can gather. Now, we've taken our precautions on each side. We both don't interact with many people, if at all. We're both working from home for the most part and uh, not really going out to do much other than just our normal local stuff. So we feel like we're, we're pretty safe in what we're doing here, or what we're engaging in with this battle report, but I would urge you to follow whatever your uh, city, state, county guidelines are and not take me deciding to interact with an opponent as somehow meaning that you should be able to do the same without observing your uh, local government's regulations. For the heretic side, I think this is more what you would traditionally see in a competitive pairing. Uh, it's the same battle group as I had used in the previous heretic video that we had. A lot of the things in here are really similar. We've got double trapperkin, double grave ghouls, double malady men, double madcaps even. And then the difference really is just that instead of bringing one unit of naysayers, we bring along two. I think it's going to be quite helpful to waterfall fury between one, you know, upkeep it at the start of the round and then move it over to the next one after that first unit charged and did their thing. And uh, Ethan and I did go through a normal pairing process for uh, like how you would in a steamroller event or something. And uh, I had paired this list with the child. And uh, when I looked at what Ethan was bringing with Kruger 2 and Morvana 1, it just seemed like bringing the child would not be the greatest idea in the world, just because I know Kruger can bully small battle groups pretty well with having a lot of access to TKs, not just from Kruger himself, but also with the uh, um, geomancy from the Wardens and Megalith. Uh, so I just wanted to drop something that could not only handle some of the armor that was coming at it, but could spread out quite wide and make sure that Kruger doesn't get uh, to get to take a huge advantage of some of his pieces that he needs or that he brings to scalpel out some of the uh, the business makers that I've gotten here. Hey, I'm Ethan. So I brought Kruger 2, and this looks like a pretty standard Kruger 2 list. I had P. Morv with me. But Kruger just seemed better overall into this pairing because it's Kruger. And I just I have ways to mitigate all child's heavies, moving them around. And then against the Heretic, I have enough ways to get around Fain Death with Sentry Stone Sprays, Lightning Storms. I just have a lot of ways to make the board not nice for them. So that's why I went with Kruger. And this is pretty much what a standard Kruger list looks like these days, I think. Megalith, three Wardens, two Wold Weirds, the Well, the Dogwood... It was pretty much mandatory. Hermit is pretty much in every Kruger list. I think what changes a lot is the wreck options. I took two sentry stones and a two stone shapers. I've seen double shifting stones with only one rune, with one stone shaper, and then they just summon in another one. But I like to have two stone shapers. That way I can summon in like a gallows grove or something cute and try and see where I can go from there. It gives me more versatility. And without the battle engine anymore, I don't think I need two shifting stone units. And I think one's just fine. First ever War Machine Battle Report, where it's not just me playing against myself. So for deployment, uh, my Heretic's kind of in a weird spot here. Uh, I won the roll to go first, and I didn't know how much of, the, of a problem this building was going to be. Uh, so I kind of sp kind of spread things out pretty symmetrically. There's a unit of Nayslayers on each side that have Grave Ghouls and uh, Malady Men. Basically, everything has... It's a very mirrored list. Like, the middle starts with... Like, I think there's even clockatrice is on the same roughly the same sides so my goal is to just kind of run the um the nayslayers up 
first, you know, we desperate pace with the, the Malady men with uh, having Combat Caster makes that really easy for them to do. Or at least gets them up the table further, right? Because they're going to do it anyways. Um, but my hope here is the for the de advanced deploy, you can tell my madcaps are a little bit back further than what the grunts are. And that's really just so that I can do the fun trick of uh, running all of the naysayers with the press forward order, but then using the war horse to knock them all down, but not knocking himself down. Then he can kind of get into a position where hopefully uh, Ethan's not going to be casting a bunch of or throwing out a bunch of sprays and lightning storms that are going to get a lot of money. Uh, so that's that's kind of the reason for the way that I've deployed here. Um, other than that, like the, the the little pile of water isn't really doing me a lot of favors here either. It's just like the I, I set set this table based off of the uh, I think the two cottages setting on war table because I've been playing that one a lot lately for whatever reason, and it's just been like a real pain in the butt uh, pain in the butt terrain set up to deal with and I'm super feeling it because I believe that my houses are like almost double the size of what the war table footprint is so this big massive like I don't know I'm not an architect is that a country style home basically a, it, it's a nice cottage yeah it's 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 a it's a big ass house is <laughs> what it is so like uh, I am you I, I'm also trying to like make the best use out of uh going to be hoping to make the best use out of relentless charge by having these naysayers in the in the pool uh that is water that they're in i think the rest of it's all pretty self-explanatory in terms of what the terrain is but um it's just rough like there's a i kind of deployed really centrally and there's a lot of really annoying terrain centrally i mean even my cage raiders stuck in the muck right now and that's not really where he wants to be uh he'd like to be up a little further which he really is just going to be a beater and a guy that takes up space because he doesn't have a ton of uh, value for corpse or corpse gathering in here. Yeah, I don't have any corpses for him, and like he's never going to get a corpse for me, so I don't really worry about the arcing. Yeah, if he'd get a corpse from like Stone Shapers and Kruger and Chuck. And he's never going to be in range of None any of, of those. Yeah, those are all either support or your caster, who's not gonna not gonna appreciate getting within the the massive threat range of nine inches of the of the cage rager. I'm pretty sure it's nine inches of speed five with reach one or range one or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so unless you gallows me or if I give you TK, which is like the ultimate nightmare. Yeah. So I still think he's valuable in this matchup. It's just the when we go when we talk about the pairing process, right? Um, the child seems like something that could do well into this matchup, but I, I, I just don't feel like I have the best um, the best ability to mitigate the movement shenanigans that Kruger has. Uh, basically, if Kruger wants something, he can just take it with the way that TKs are set up. And I felt like having this really wide heretic list would do a lot of work, and I just really need to be cognizant of the lightning storm stuff. But you can kind of see here on the bottom side where I'm moving these naysayers now that um, I'm kind of just ignoring some of the spacing because I'm getting tripped up on my own models. The better thing for me to do down here would have been to deploy my army or that side of my army far far away from heretic on the very bottom side of the screen so that they could just burn right up between the cottage and the forest and just have a straight lane to get to where they wanted but instead now i've got to screw around with this stupid house right now and it doesn't seem to be helping my army take up any valuable position on the table no, and I gave you that side because I knew you'd get funneled through there, and I figured between that bottom forest and the house, I could put up some nice lightning storms. Even uh, that on my side, I can have that well in a nice space to drift some AoEs, maybe RFP some guys so you can't bring them back. And it's just, it seemed like that was the, the side to kind of cluster you in and, and force you into the lane that I wanted you in. then for my turn one i'm basically i'm deployed pretty symmetrical too well in the middle two world wardens on one side and i think that's me rolling for fury that side i at first turn i was trying to use these nice dials i got from use on monique so i'm like ah oh, i bought all these widgets pre-covid and all these dials i'm going to use them and then i realized it wasn't fun so you'll see me later on just switch back to normal tokens but right now i'm just kind of measuring threats 
but on the right side I have two World Wardens and a World Weird. Top side I have World Warden, Megalith, and a World Weird, and then Sentry Stone split on each side, so that way I have options of where I'm going to Lightning Storm, where I'm going to spray my own dudes to get around Feign Death. And then up there I was measuring Clockatrice range, because I don't want to just run my heavies forward. I'm measuring if I can spray and kill the monkey, and then I realize it's fucking pointless, because he's just going to come back. And then in a better spot and killing spree through my mannequins so that's not even worth it measuring if i can drift some nice aoe fours from him because i know i can target some of the big guys in the naysayer ua i can use as a beacon for my sprays since he's not knocked down so i can target him at least and clip other dudes so i'm just kind of measuring through and i think that top century stone rolled three fury so he's sitting pretty good the bottom one's only rolling one and then I think you're boosting on yeah. the, the well right now. I think the well decided to take some shots towards the top side of the screen. Yeah, he shot the clock at Trice because I'm like, you don't. He didn't take sacrifice. So I'm like, might as well get some shift damage in. Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't mention any of the Arcana. Of course, I have to take Reckoning because it's my Trump Arcana. But then I took Ruin because it's Kruger and I want to stop at least one TK at some point in time. And then the last one that I took, I had a really hard time figuring out what to do. So I just ended up settling on Sacrifice because I figured it could get annoying if he's making a charge lane somewhere. And it could also be a contestant. You mean piece. Shadow? Shadow, Shadow, yeah, not yeah. Sacrifice, sorry. And then there's just me measuring to walk forward with the mannequin and spray a dude targeting somebody in the back and then staying out of charge threat of the other ones yeah mannequins are screw like screw like this because you can stay out of like most of my threat ranges and try to pepper off anything that might still be in threat um but then like i want to get rid of mannequins but every time i, I have to kill at least two a turn or else there's no point mm -hmm. it just lets me place them and get better spray angles which rat four sucks but aiming to a rat six and then vet leader from mr mick foley dogwood himself to make him possibly rat seven aiming is just too legit. Yeah, Dogwood really fit, does quite a bit for the faction. Yeah, he's pretty much auto include in bones these days. Like Puppet Master on a stick, Vet Leader for four points, and Craft Talisman when it comes up. And then there's me measuring Kruger so I can know where I'm not going to just die to a clock charge. But I know there's a Glimmer Imp. I don't know if we can really, s or not Glimmer Imp, a Trapperkin in the yeah, middle of the like zone. He's, yeah, he's put himself in the middle of the table right beside that 12 inch stick. Yep, and I had to ditch some Fury, so I just put down the World Warden Animus in case he got cute with a Gallows on Kruger. Because I know the World Warden Animus is going to be big this turn for just stopping my stuff from getting pulled in. But I knew I was in charge range of the the Trapperkin, so I was going to have to put a Heavy up in front of me, base to base with that Cloud. Yeah, because those Trapperkins can pr hit pretty hard. They're Mat 7 with POW 9 Weapon Masters that have Backstab. They're Mat 6, because that actually Sorry, comes yeah. up. You oh thought yeah, they does. were Mat yeah, 7. Yeah, I thought they were Mat 7, because yeah. they're Speed 7. It's like, I, that one of the things I like about playing Kador is that almost all the stats are the same. Oh, and then that's where the turn got cut off, I think. Yeah, the turn got cut off. Now we jumped forward a little bit. I just ran up. Pretty symmetrical on each side. My stone shapers ran way back just so they don't die to an assault spray, but yeah. that's pretty much it for my turn. It was only like a two-minute gap, but that two minutes was what it took for you to move around. I don't think much of anything else left the table for me. So, no, I only killed that one model turn yeah, one, which one I knew you were going to revive because mm -hmm. I totally forgot about it. Yeah, the Twilight Sisters are on that upper side of the table, so like they're kind of that, that's their job at least is to stay up there. I also like there's they can heal the um, the stupid Rager, so like I, that's fun too. But other than that, they don't really have a whole lot of value outside of just bringing back guys. But that well really screws with it. Yeah. So I ran the Glimmer Imp right up the middle here, um, mostly just to be a stealth solo that's on the flag. Uh, I probably didn't need him to be right on the flag, but this is where I've decided to put him. It just made sense. And this is where we were measuring some gallows threats, because my warden had to run up there the base the cloud to stop anything from getting the Kruger. So we're trying to see if you can gallows a heavy in and then trade it. Yeah, and that was uh, 
since I've been playing so many factions back to back lately, I was like mixing the rules of Baron and mixing the ru- or mixing his rules with the uh, Grey Lord adjunct. So like I'm like, oh, of course he's got spiritual conduit, so I can throw gallows out twelve inches and just start pulling heavies and ripping them off the table like nobody's business. Yeah, and I put down the ten inch <laughs> widget, and you're like, my gallows is twelve <laughs> inches. Ho ho ho! I know. Like, that's all, I thought it was all. He's cool. a spell slave. No, <laughs> no, he's yep, spell slave and arcane assist or whatever it is. Not arcane assist. Yeah, I think it's it's arcane assist. It like because he g- gives you a free upkeep. Like, yeah. I couldn't remember the name of the. I mean, I have ability. War Room on my phone. I could literally look while we're while you're thinking on your mm-hmm. turn. But yeah, that was my hope was like maybe I can pull some heavies out of here and start getting some early trades. But then uh, I move up the widget because this is the other problem that I have with bouncing around all the time is that I kept thinking that the speed on the heretic was five, but it's six. So he might have been a little bit closer to getting one of those wolds than I would have than than actually was was real. And the way that he moved up last turn was by charging and running into a stupid trapperkin that I should have moved first. So he really should should have been able to get that gallows off. Yeah, and he could have been a little farther up. Yep. And I just looked it up. It's called Arcane Support, which Support. is the Horde's version of Arcane Assist, because oh. this says Warlock. Gotcha. It's one of those rules that they just changed they from Warcast stream, to Warlock. Streamlining the, the, the rules. Yeah, Road to War, Torments of War. Yeah, is it Warpath? Torments? Yeah, it's Torment, Torments. Rites of Torment. Rites of Torment, yeah. Yeah three different spells for the same thing you see i didn't realize i was on camera so you can see my pasty ass well <laughs> I, sh- I should stop swearing <laughs> my nice farmer's tan from helping out at my parents business yep asparagus farmer for life yeah they grow seven acres and i'm just you can see where i'm burning and i wear i wear wear gloves so my hands are just pasty white and my shoulders but i have to wear my my wolf tank every game yep that's that's what i i think I, the shirt that i have is like one of the few that i have that fit anymore so like it's it's a weird shirt, but um, I think we missed a clock spraying down two mannequins. Yeah, that and that was th- the reason why I think I took such an aside there was because like I'm so th- I'm thinking so hard about what I need to do here, and the clock of trice. I'm like, okay, well I have the gun on it, so I can at least try and mow down some uh, some twigs because they. I need to start mitigating some of those sprays because you having three of them a turn just isn't going to work for me. So I know I'm the clockatrice is a little bit more on the safe side because of uh, the time stutter, but then with all the TKs, like you have to put in a lot of a lot of resources to grab one of those clockatrices. So I feel like putting them there and trying to get a little bit more aggressive. It's not it doesn't sound great to trade a clockatrice for a couple mannequins, but I think I'm just trying to do something effective here, and I might have gotten a little too like greedy or just didn't do it quite the way that I should have but other than that it's just trying to figure out where to place everything so I don't lose so much because even though I have a pretty wide list I don't have a lot of like my, my threat level isn't deep right like if if two of those naysayers get into something it's going to it's going to hurt a lot but um, I need to make sure that they all get there mm-hmm. so I it's just really tough like every time I play against Kruger it's this massive mental exercise because like I said if Kruger wants something he'll take it and it's just trying to figure out a way to position everything to make sure that he either needs to overextend to take everything or um, that he needs to make really unfortunate choices to do what he needs to but you can kind of see like my placement here of that upper side cluster is like perfect for a lightning storm to go in and just wipe it out Mm -hmm. and and i didn't summon anything last turn with the well just to keep like a gallows grove in reserve because it's only two points so it's most people think it's not worth summoning in but like it places three within and then it can place itself in an arc so like i can reach out with a lightning storm from like 16 inches away yeah it seems like a or a tk from 16 inches away like it's a good piece to have in your back pocket yeah um so it's really hard to talk about this turn because I'm also doing another thing that is super unfortunate for playing against Kruger is I'm not really respecting the scenario enough. Uh, Kruger does have the bottom of two, so all of these scenario elements become really alive, and the way that you can mitigate that is by just flooding zones, but you can see I'm being really coy with how I'm holding things back, and I, I'm just not paying attention to scenario. I think we talked pre-game about how I can get around feign death with the lightning storms, the spraying my own dudes in the butts. So I think you're playing a little bit cagey with them to try and hold them for after my feet turn. Yeah, because I'm just in attrition mode right now. Like, my whole mindset is attrition. 
and that's fine like you you need to war machine has so many aspects of of the game that you need to pay attention to all of them but what i'm really doing here is just paying attention to attrition because i'm worried about it the most Mm -hmm, because you're trying to prepare for surviving after my feet turn and coming back and retaliating yeah because i feel like turn the, the game here starts for me on turn three and i'm also trying like i'm not really giving a whole lot of credit to your feet too like i know that your feet exists and it's not that i don't don't acknowledge it but it's just so hard to like try to keep pieces alive while trying to respect the neg three speed feet that pushes me around well it's it's a three inch push and then neg two speed. yeah sorry never mind and this isn't usually as like live of a scenarios it's hard to capture everything on the whole board Yeah, because it goes across the entire middle but like i just project so much threat with gal like trample gallows trample tks if i summon a gallows grove i can do and then i think there we're measuring a firewall and then i point out it has to be all in your control area i just wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to where the where the template actually was it Mm -hmm. wasn't too far off no and it's pretty much there just to stop mannequins from going up and spraying wherever they want because that's literally all it does in this matchup yeah in these early turns i just don't have a lot to do and again i'm not really committing to the center part of the table so things are not looking super like active for me and it really a lot of it has to do with this stupid river and that stupid house like I set this table up myself, and I looked at the side that Ethan's on right now, and I was like, yeah, this looks okay, and I should, probably should have gone to the other side and been like, this is not a good side of a table. I think that... Yeah, that was like an auto pick. I'm like, I, I, I don't want this. The this well would have to go right in the middle there, and then I'm like, this is a nice board section where like nothing of mine can move. Yeah, it's like one of those times... A lot of people talk about War Machine being like, you really should be going first all the time to just like project your threat and get the alpha first. But on this table, like, and with your feet, meaning that you're probably more likely to get the alpha than I am, I really should have just picked sides and not taken the one with the house in the middle of the deploy, or not in the, just in the middle of the, the table. It just is so difficult to work around. Mm-hmm. And when I, like, I like to go first with Kruger, but then the well is two inches back and then it's gumming up my deployment zone. And if I'm stuck on that side, like that building in the well is just... It's a nightmare trying yeah. to move things through because I always forget I can't move through my well. I put pl- like I watch Infernals <laughs> enough, and it's like, oh, <laughs> I run through my cl- my my stupid structure, and it's like, oh, I have a well. It does things. I can run through it, and then I play, and I'm like, wait, I can't. Yeah. Your well doesn't come with a Valen Hawk attachment. No, but it comes with a summoning in up to a four po- or five point solo. Yeah, both have good guns. So yeah, just the like, ghost shot is so nice. So I think. I'm just making caskins that like literally have done nothing. They're just there for future corpses. up i believe that finishes up my turn i don't think i needed to change batteries here again oh yeah th- i think this is one of the points where we like forget that to start the clock yeah because we pause it that way you can pause the camera and do the and cuts yeah so like the the clock is immaterial from now on but there's a, a little bit of a like since this is the first time i've had to have or i've had someone else on the channel doing death clock with war machine there's just a little bit of a of a learning curve i think it'll take a little what little bit for me to work out the kinks to get everything to work smoothly and that's probably on me too because you told me you were pausing every turn well, and then like i just start my turn because you i wait for you to get back to the table and i'm like okay i'm gonna start doing stuff i start rolling fury i place a mannequin over there where i can potentially get into melee well because it makes, it makes sense for you to just go because i've slammed the clock over and just forgot to hit the pause button so that's that's on me and then we were talking about this before, Courtney. You can see how cluttered my side is because, like, <laughs> all these widgets that I bought, all these sticks, I'm like, I'm going to use them. And then you're so used to being nice and clutter-free. So, like, you'll see me trying to dig through and find, like, my 5-inch stick or my 3-inch stick. Yep. And it's just like, man, this is just – looking at it on the camera, I'm like, man, this is such a cluster. Yeah, the uh, I have another, like, 2 by 4 
sitting area sitting on the other side where like the camera track is and that's where all my widgets go but and i couldn't be couldn't be helped to put ethan somewhere nah i had a chair next to me but there's me measuring like there's a bunch of different well options to shoot i'm like i could shoot drift some rfp shots and i think that's the biggest problem with when i play kruger is he has so many options and there's so many things he can do in a turn yeah there's it's hard to kind of to focus victory. like it's hard to you have so many options, it's hard to plan out which plan is the most optimal and then execute it in a timely manner because, like, you just have so many options. There I was measuring, like, okay, if I TK Megalith, he can charge the objective and get in that zone. So, like, I know I can get that objective and get that zone if I can clear out the Nayslayer that ran and then the monkey that ran in there. And I think the when I've seen you play Kruger a lot, and I think the the... Only the thing that probably causes you to have these issues and probably would cause any other Kruger player to have these issues is that you kind of formulate your plan as you go along. But I think you just need to take like two or three minutes to just look at the table and say, what do I need to do to mm -hmm. get me to my avenue of victory? And then that was me on the bottom aiming with a world warrior to shoot their clock in the forest. But as you can see from his phone, I did not do that well of damage. I think I missed two shots, boost the last one, and then there's the well that shot it. Yeah, no, no, no uh, aspects are out or anything. So I think he took like less, five damage. Or no, or the less well didn't shoot because I didn't summon anything. But yeah, the weird just did nothing. <laughs> yeah, had a hard time. And now uh, I'm planning out like where I can walk this mannequin and stop counter charge, and then maybe where I can target my own mannequin and spray, or if I'm going to target the objective. And I think there's me looking for that half inch melee just to make sure I'm engaged. And this isn't the first half inch melee you look for in this game either. Uh, I know. It I think just that was gets like the lost second. in the pile. I know. I need to organize better. <laughs> I think we cleared all the tokens off so we could get like a picture for one of the transitions, and then like I just threw everything back on. It's like your bedroom, basically. And then you can <laughs> see like I switch back to actually having stacks of tokens next to my models instead of the little dials. It's just a haphazard. Because I have all those dials for my Tharn. Because I'm like, oh, this is so nice for rapid healing. Or like when I played Posse Spam. Because marking that in War Room. I literally clocked myself just marking damage because my opponent's like, oh, how many is on model A? I'm like, let me load up War Room and check. Flip it to me. Yeah. This will only take me five minutes. And then they're like, what about model C? And I'm like, I just backed out of that unit. Let me go back in. Mm -hmm. So now we got, did the sprays happen already? Because I think we were trying to, oh, you're trying to plot them out now. Yeah, because and we had to walk a couple of the mannequin like activations back. Not that they had activated, but you were thinking, oh, I could go here and do this. But then you realize that you were going to be moving up to sit on the wall. Mm -hmm. And that, that firewall gets you. Yep. And then I think that's where we realized, I think I hit the unpause button. And then mannequin boosted the hit into the monkey. Luckily got it. Other mannequin is spraying my other mannequin in the butt. That way I clip, I think, two Nayslayers, a cast camp, the objective. And I'm doing some boosts just to make sure I kill the Nayslayers. Because... It's, they're knocked down. I don't need help hitting them, even with Rat 4, but yeah. I just don't want to risk rolling a 4 for damage. Exactly, yeah. Armor 14 against POW 10 is, like, just just close enough to mess up for you at least once. And I have the Fury, and the up there is where we yeah, take the we clock, we're and like, we're like, it. eh. And then I think that's where I start to slow down, because, like, I'm so used to playing <laughs> a war table, where it's like, okay, all the distances are here, and, like, we're just going to mess around without a clock. And then, like, I'm playing Kruger, and I'm like, oh, I got to actually put down a widget. Like, what's my trample TK threat? Whereas before, it's like, I just click on my ward, and it's like, okay, I'm 18 inches away. This is what I can do. Like, ugh. Th 3D War Machine is such a hassle. It is. 2D War Machine is the future. No, I disagree. No, but I agree. Um, I agree with I you. Was, it, I was playing a, a game recently. I think it w we streamed a game with, uh, with More Than Dice, and... Uh, when they they ran because the other thing about war table that blows with the uh the clock is that there's no way there's not really a good way to have an overlay that both players can use to toggle back and forth so what we had was another person the ones who were commentating keep track of the clock for us mm -hmm. just to see what would happen and i clocked like on turn three but um roughly like if you get a 30 minute buffer on each side it's not that bad no and there's me mannequins were doing some sprays one sprayed the glimmer imp that ran around in the butt. The other one punched the monkey just to get him. Because I think he was towing the zone. Because when you flipped it to me, you're like, okay, here you go. And I looked at the tail. I'm like, I think I can score five. And I'm just going to try and clear the zones and try and see where I can go. 
but then I wasted some activation shooting stuff. That, like, shooting that bottom clock was just stupid. I don't think I needed to do that. Because I'm like, if I even damage that thing, you're going to stutter it behind the forest, and then I can't get to it. Yeah, because then uh, if I get out of, like, line of sight for TKs, or if I get deep enough into the into the zone to where TK can't get me out, then that really shuts down that idea. Mm-hmm. And I think I was, like, in the... I was in an attrition mode where I'm like, okay, I just need to kill some clocks. Like, it's very rare I play in the clocks without sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I can spread damage to this one. I can spread damage to this one. It's so nice. And they were measuring if I'm in heretic range for ruin, if I need to TK my own heavies. Yeah, and this is where I was kind of sandbagging ruin a little bit. Um, You were planning on doing a bunch of TKs on on this turn, I believe. And Mm -hmm. I just figure sacrifice is going to be my way to kind of come through out of this like shadow horrible. shadow is uh, going to be it's out of habit you're I like know. i'm playing I just take it all the time yeah. i have sacrifice and ruin that's what i do yeah but i figured i had to look I'd up what shadow play. did yeah <laughs> that's right no one not a whole lot of people play that they don't value it enough i think it, i originally was going to go with ill omens but then i was like those numbers don't matter enough for one for a one-way swing mm-hmm. and i knew like shadow or not yeah shadow S- yeah shadow there we go we're, like we're, yeah. <laughs> You weren't going to be able to use Shadow, like, to kill my heavies, but you could, because, like, if you sh- summon something with Shadow, I'm just going to TK it away. Yep. But you could use it to summon something in a zone and, like, that. So it wasn't a bad option. It's just it loses some of the versatility of, like, trading a heavy for nothing. Yep. Oh, I get it. Oh, man. I had an idea that'll come up later. I'll talk about it later. Ooh, ooh. Um, But, yeah, th- th- I really, like, again, getting back to my earlier turns, like, I did not put anywhere near enough stuff in these zones to contest things out. Like, I know that Kruger can just sweep scenario out from under you, like one of those people pulling out tablecloths with all the glassware on it, and I just was not in the right mind. I was like, oh, a a monkey will be fine, and then I'm like, nope, a monkey's not going to be fine. It's just going to die to a world weird or a boosted spray. Yep, and there's where the well shot the clock, basically did nothing, and then summoned in the gallows grove. Yep. Just in... Because I knew if I went... Because that... Uh, clock is just in your control so i'm like if i need to start the tk train kruger's got to do it because there's the port and he can't he can't afford to get too close to me if this goes bad no and like i know like because kruger's gonna tk i'm like okay do you want to ruin i got five more foot fury like (laughs) whereas (laughs) if i I do it with a warden first first, i thought about it for a second and then i just i knew that sacrifice was probably going to be the way to that i would be going but um yeah i didn't ruin it Yep. short version yep so i tk'd him around realized i could tk him out of the zone but then i'm like i think i'll start measuring here pretty soon I'm like uh if i feet where i'm standing i'm gonna push an inch and a half through the forest and i think that was me holding down the inch then we're like another half inch would just be just out of the zone which for the record is right underneath ethan but he said he couldn't find it yeah i know i i <laughs> even in this picture i can't see it and then there's me measuring my 16 inch control area thanks to the well and i'm like I got spoiled with War Table with the feet because it's so nice for pushing stuff. Like Yeah, you I, just know exactly what's in his feet range at all times. And then you can just easily measure where here I got to hold a laser with my shaky hand. You see, oh, nope, that's not straight on. Then I push it, and I'm like, nope, that's not straight on. <laughs> then I'm like, nope, that's not straight on. And that's like, oh, almost straight on. I think you were also kind of figuring out where you wanted Kruger to go because I think you haven't moved yet, and no. you feed it and then moved. Yes, because I knew... Because that, uh, the glimmer imp that charged the bold warden in front of me is currently in my reach. So I wanted the feet push it out of melee with me so I could do some cute things with my gun and maybe kill some miles in the middle zone, even though I forgot that the, or no, that's a trapper can. I forgot the glimmer imp has stealth. Yep. So like it, w- it didn't really matter. And then there's that knockdown one that's in the zone, but he's out of command because the Nayslayer UA is all the way up in the woods. Yeah, he just went where he needed to instead of doing anything normal i think i've also been playing with tactician a lot lately so like this is this is what tactician does to you it you actually have to play the game and relearn how to play (laughs) things and there's me pushing heavies back pushing stuff back and the nice thing for the feet if you clump stuff up like i didn't catch the back stuff so i was able well, to push the front stuff into the back stuff. So, like, those are some nice lightning storm AoEs if I wanted to go for attrition this round. Like, if you would have flooded the zones, I could yeah, dump just stuff start, up. start pushing. Whatever you don't push back just dies to lightning storms. Yep. So there, my army is not very, like, tanky. Kruger moves up just outside reach because I'm like, okay, I'm going to start shooting some stuff. 
Kruger's got my nice reload two gun, boost the hit, hit the guy in front of me. Then I'm like, oh, do I want to shoot the the nay slayer? And I'm like, wait, he's knocked down. Yep. He's out of command, but he's knocked down. The top ones have feign death on them from play dead, but the bottom ones don't. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And then all I those little those little wooden tokens are the ones that have been affected by feet. Yep. And then there I TK Megalith two inches forward, so now he can charge the objective and get into the zone. Kruger's sitting on one, and I think at some point here you point out I gave her yep, yep. I gave Heretic TK, which is like oh no. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. we're both so Gallo casters, the, we're yeah. both rebuke casters, like there's one spell you don't want to give him. Yep, the, the TK is the danger zone. Like the heretic's got a thick enough focus stack to where he can really make it dangerous. Yep. Megalith goes in, kills the objective, like and this is me in full on like I need to win this turn <laughs> or I'm going to die. Because, like, there's Kruger on one camp. I didn't even have enough Fury to put up the Warden Animus. So it's like, yeah, the I'm going gonna, gonna to get Gallows. I'm going to get TK'd. The boosted uh, Quaka Trice paralyzed Shadow. Like, getting that in first, then TKing, then Gallows, then the Heretic still can. If I don't do anything else, the Heretic wasn't affected by feet, so he could charge in and just get you. But at that point, you had pointed out also that probably two Gallows or a couple Rebukes will just get you like that. And then there's Megalith. He killed the objective, and then the nice lightning storm AOE took out four dudes and the 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 madcap boss. Yep, the madcap boss. So now boss. now I'm looking at the rules for catastrophic explosion because I've literally never had to deal with it. Um, I'm usually pretty protective with him, but this game, like I said, I was just not not the greatest. And now my my catastrophic explosion doesn't really go out far enough as I would have hoped. I'd be like, oh, I can maybe clip these these twig dudes because I'm still living in the world where I'm going to get another turn. Like, hopeful, Brian. You got to be optimistic in War Machine. I'm always optimistic. So it comes back towards my own guys and just blows somebody else off the... No, it, that was the actual madcap boss that I just took off. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't... I think it does some damage to my Quackatrice. And I blow it up enough to lose an aspect, which I wasn't super yippy about because I didn't. I wanted to keep him around with as little as little damage as possible. Mm-hmm. So I used knowledge of the dam to re-roll this one. Because I think you did five to the f- six, which would have been just enough to take out your spirit. And yep. even though they repair each turn or auto heal, like that's you don't want to just lose the system. If you could have stuttered off your own AOE into that zone. Yeah, then it'd be a different, that'd be a better deal. Oh, yeah. But I just didn't want to make the Quackatrices any harder to, or easier to get. Because like I said, if if I make it to the next turn, then the Kruger spray can happen. And this way, I guess, I don't have to worry about healing up two different aspects with the Heretic. Because then I'd have weird activation orders. And then there's the Warden. He trampled into the zone. He missed that stupid Nace, or The Glimmer Imp. The Glimmer Imp. No, the Nace. Like, wait, he was knocked down. Or no, he's not. He's no, on he's feet. just pushed. Yeah. So I missed because I needed a seven. I didn't care. He's in the zone. Nothing else is there. There's me TKing my heavy forward and charging to clear off that guy once I realized he had stealth. And then I get to trigger my trap card. Yeah. Uh. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> here comes Shadow, which I forgot all about because it's like. Because who uses it? It's I know. such a good, it's such a situationally awesome one. And I didn't, like, my storage area is a mess right now. So, like, I didn't want to have to ask Ethan to reach five feet above his head and grab my other cage rager. So I decide, like, I'm going to put a cage rager at the back of this zone. And then I'm like, nope, this is not the best place for him because you can just TK him out. So I'm yep. going to put him here. Because you're like, I'm going to put him on the <laughs> edge. And then I'm like, I'm going to be nice and say, if you put yep. him there, I win. <laughs> this this cage rager's got some moves. So he's just, like, moving around to, like, three different places. I'm like, then I'm going to move him back here. And I'm like, no, you can TK. But now I'm going to base the flag. Because you're like, <laughs> oh, you can walk in TK 13. I'm out here. I'm like, no, I can trample in TK. Yep. And it was like, just so, so messed up. So and you're like, like, oh, can you, can't you actually get me? to me? on this flag and i'm like how about if we go to this other side (laughs) and i'm like it's just like the world of like figuring out the vectors of like how screwed am i because i really think that i can get this sacrifice thing to work like or not sacrifice this shadow play to work and make it so i don't lose this game and there i missed the charge attack that i boosted i bought an attack so there's still a glimmer imp right in front of my world warden it's like uh (laughs) <laughs> I like okay like my plan has gone to not good because now there's a full health cage rager and a glimmer imp so I'm like this warden deck here he's gonna have to do some work I walk up give him stone strength so now he's a respectable pow 18 Ooh. 
He's oh. a th- Fury 3 heavy. That's oh, funny. boy. A Fury 3 heavy <laughs> that doesn't charge for free. <laughs> and then there's me measuring dogwood to see if I can maybe get Papa Master on him in that cloud. Yeah, because we played the cloud as though it were one whole cloud, not two three-inch AoEs slapped <laughs> together. And then there's me measuring Hermit. I'm like, uh, if I could have walked Ruined and then TK'd him into the zone, but now like I can't. I don't have the Fury to TK him because I, I need the spells. So like Hermit... That proxy base, I think we're going to put down soon. No, we're just going to measure him running yeah, 10 inches. Yeah, for it. Yeah. You're like, you you need the point. Yeah, and I don't want to forget. Because I'm like, if I do this warden first, I don't know if I have distance to get there. And I needed Hermit to move out of the way for Dogwood. Because now he walks in, toes the cloud. Papa Master is the big boy because he's so good. And he's in range for Vet Leader, so I only need threes to hit. Yeah, I did plop down a Cage Rager because it's the most tanky thing that I can throw out there. And I just figured that it was had the better likelihood of surviving. Although I don't know the stats for a skin and moans right off the top of my head. I think but without less corpses, boxes. W- less boxes, and doesn't come like with corpses. Armor seventeen, I think. I think he's sixteen. Ugh. So there's my charge tag. I rolled a twelve, and I'm like, okay, this is good. And because of my awesome positioning, none of my grave ghouls are in range. Yep. And then my second fist, I do seven, but then my chain attack smite. We're looking that up just to make sure it's a full power attack because stone strength gives you plus two strength. So he gets slammed into my warden that's in front of him for another boosted that rolled a 12, and now he's left on like four boxes. Yeah, he's got not a lot left. And that's just after my initials. And then I forget to do damage on my warden. I roll and do just a couple points to him. It was four, I think. Yeah. And then there's me buying an attack, killing him. Yep, there goes the cage raider. Now, my big interrupt here is that if that were a clockatrice instead, I don't think I lose this game. Yes. Oh, well, spoiler. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lightning storm <laughs> to that Wold Warden in the butt yep. that and kills it, a Glimmer Imp. Exactly kills the Glimmer Imp. He needed a 5 to kill, and it rolls a 5. Yep. yep. But yeah, I think if that's a clockatrice, yeah, I, didn't I even don't think, lose. No, because I, I, I don't have the spells left. And if you summon that clock... And then I just time stutter out. Now you can't do anything to me after after your first initial or first or second initial. Like, you don't get to combo anything. You just pops out and then that's the end i mean i i guess that it assumes that i stutter that yeah, you stutter you have to hit me in the right places yeah it's all about the columns yeah but i think that probably because i i was thinking tanky because you don't have all the attacks no but uh the when, when i'm looking back on it now i'm just like if that's a clock trice it just time stutters out of the way and then it stays there and contests the zone. And normally a, a Wold Warden is not going to kill a Cadre. The fact I was able to chain attack smite him into my own dude so he didn't move, so he takes a free boosted attack, and then I can buy more attacks. Like, And I rolled a 12 on the charge and a 12 on the, s- the boosted smite damage. It was just... Yeah. No, it was a good game overall. Playing against Kruger is always a mental exercise for both players. Unless, I think even if you're an experienced Kruger 2 player you still have so many things that you have to keep in your mind and try and do that in a timely fashion. But when you remove clock situation, the game gets really, really awkward. I think even though we did take the clock away on this one, we totaled up the minutes. You started your turn with 48 48 minutes left. This Mm -hmm. took you 47 minutes and 32 seconds. Yep, because as soon as like the clock turned off, this was my first game of the clock in literally six months. I'm like, okay, my one goal besides not procking sacrifice, which I didn't have to worry about, was not clocking myself. And then as soon as the clock, we realized it was screwed up, and you're like, oh, whatever, we'll play. Uh, like, the pressure came off, so then all of a sudden, like, <laughs> now I could think about all these Kruger plays, and it's like, I, I, I well, don't you, need this. And you made it. So yeah. you made it just under the wire, but oh. I do think if that's a stupid bird. that If that's a bird, you... Yeah, I think I think then I kill, kill Kruger right afterwards. Yep, because that clock is going to stutter out of combat. He can spray me. Yep. For free. Well, that that clock stutters out of combat and then goes away forever. Oh, I thought it gets to activate on your next turn. No, I think it goes away at the end of the turn. No, it gets to activate next turn. Oh, well, okay. it can't make it. T- it can't move. Strange. Oh, see, this I'm is just, what we get for I'm never just playing not, Shadow. I'm just not used to used to all these Arcana Let's and everything. It. Uh, it's removed from play after one round, and the oh, Warbies so cannot I do advance. Get to do something. Yeah. Sweet. Well, Shadow is way better than what I think people give it credit for. It's just sacrifice, even with after the clock nerf, is so good. I know, I know it's, I know it's still well, when a you're only good Arcana, two. but like, yeah. yeah, and like, it's not as good in uh, bump. 
I just like if that was if the if Shadow were sacrifice in this game, it wouldn't have done anything. No, I just wouldn't have been able to willy nilly shoot clocks and do and whatever since, I felt like. Since you have low amounts of activations, and I have a lot of places where you need to pay attention, it was a better proposition to have that contesting model, mm-hmm. and it, it did what it needed to do. It's just like like I said, if it was a bird, now that I'm thinking about it, it probably just would have been better. Yep, and then we realized when we were talking afterwards, like I'm like, why did I charge that? heavy and all i have to do is walk into stealth range and lightning storm it and then even if he ruins it i have the second warden come in Mm -hmm. but i think i was worried about missing so i wanted to like i wanted to charge boost my initials boost both my initials but i think i had the tk myself so i'm like a boosted eight and then an unboosted eight is worth it and then i was like i forgot all about shadow yeah it was harsh but if you uh if you are a a burgeoning circle player leave some Leave some comments below, and we can have Ethan answer them. He's our resident circle expert, best best circle player in the universe. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> go that far. I mean, <laughs> when you're, like, the only circle player in your meta that... Exactly, yeah. Like, in all of Wisconsin, there's, like, three. Yep. And I'm, like, I'm, I'm like a Minnesota player now because I was living up in River Falls. You'll always be a Wisconsin player to me. 